Lecture 9, The Rule of Vs. The relationships between the dip of a plane and topography are formalized into a series of rules, collectively called the rule of Vs, by which the direction of dip can be estimated from the outcrop patterns. Wherever the plane crosses a valley, the resulting outcrop trace is characteristic of the orientation of the plane. This slide summarizes these rules. In all the figures, the upper row is a three-dimensional diagram, and the lower row is a map. The topographic contours are denoted by the black lines, and the layer by the stippled band. In all cases, the stream flows towards the south. Let's start with a horizontal layer. In this case, the outcrop trace of the layer follows the topographic contours. This makes sense because the intersection of a horizontal plane with topography is a topographic contour. So, remember, the outcrop trace of a horizontal layer follows the topographic contours. Let's look now at a vertical layer. In this case, the layer cuts straight across the valley. The outcrop trace is straight and does not bend in the valley. Straight outcrop traces mean vertical layers. Now, let's look at a layer dipping upstream, more than the slope of the valley. In this case the outcrop trace of the layer makes a V that points in the dip direction, upstream. The outcrop trace of a layer dipping downstream, more than the slope of the valley, also has a V shape, with the V pointing in the dip direction. So, a layer dipping more than the slope of the valley, will have a V outcrop pattern across the valley, with the V pointing in the direction of dip. The next case is rather rare. The dip of the layer is equal to the slope of the valley. In this case, the outcrop trace consists of two bands parallel to the dip direction. Finally, if the layer dips less than the slope of the valley, the outcrop pattern will be a V, pointing opposite to the dip direction. This case is rather unusual. So, the rule of Vs boils down to, layers that are horizontal, follow the topographic contours across the valley. Layers that are vertical, cross straight the valley. And layers that dip in between, make a V across the valley. This V points in the direction of dip in most cases. Also, the steeper the layer is, the more straight its outcrop trace across the valley is. These relationships are clear when we have units of different resistance to erosion. The strong units, for example sandstones, will form crests, while the weak units, for example shales, will form valleys. Therefore, the land surface will show some asymmetry. A hogback is one example. This is a ridge of land formed by the outcropping edges of tilted strata. It has a slope parallel to the dip on top of the strong rocks, which we call the dip slope. And a concave upward slope opposite to the dip direction in the weak rocks, which we call the scarp slope. Here is one example from a hogback ridge in Colorado. We can clearly see the dip slope and the scarp slope. The dip slope is a good approximation to the top of the strong unit, in this case the Dakota sandstone. Here is a map view of the hogback. We can clearly see the trace of the strong rock unit, making a V across the valley, and the V points in the direction of dip. We can also identify the dip slope and the scarp slope. The gradient of the dip slope is close to the dip of the resistant rock unit. Here is an example from a topographic map of an area in Montana. The resistant unit makes Vs across the valleys. These Vs point downstream in the direction of dip. The dip slopes, for example P or K, are close to the top of the resistant unit. To learn more about this, please read these sections from Reagan. And answer this question.